<laughs> Here at the zoo, we've got two groups of squirrel monkeys. We have a group of three and a group of three. Um, this group has one male and two females. So their names are Hunter, who is right here. That's our, one of our females. We have Vera, who's the old lady looking in the middle right here on the log. And then Jackson is our male, and he's up there on the mesh at the very top. Um, so right now I just put out some fun treats for them. I put out some ice blocks, and those ice blocks have uh, a couple of peanuts and some mealworms in them, and those happen to be a couple of their favorite treats. So hopefully they will play with those and investigate those and see what's going on. Um, that's a type of enrichment that we guys, we offer these guys. And enrichment can be anything that we add to their environment that'll increase natural behaviors. So foraging behaviors, anything that's problem solving, anything they might want to interact with. Um, so we can put out food enrichment like this. This can also be considered a sensory enrichment because it's cold and they're touching it and that's different for them to feel. We can put out other types of sensory enrichment for, they, for them to smell. So we've got lots of scents that they really like. These guys, for whatever reason, really like stinky scents. And then we have um, visual enrichment for them to look at, things that they can see. So mirrors or sometimes we'll bring in stuffed animals and that can be a social enrichment. They can look at it and they can see another funny looking animal. They may not know how to interact or react to that. So different things for them to do that will increase their natural behaviors, which is lots of fun. Um, looks like Hunter's trying to figure out our enrichment over there. He's like, why can't I pick up my mealworms? I'm stuck. So, um, if you guys have any questions about squirrel monkeys, let me know. I'm happy to answer questions as well. These guys are found all throughout South America and they like to live in rainforested areas, primary and secondary forests. Um, they are mostly arboreal, which means they live in trees. So you guys can see they're excellent climbers. You can find them up in their trees on the perching. They'll climb all over the mesh. Every once in a while you'll see them down on the ground, but they prefer to be higher up. Um, you guys can see they're, they're pretty small monkeys, right? Yeah. Yeah, they're not very big. That's about as big as they're going to get. So from the tip of their nose to the end of their tail, they're about 3, 16 inches in length maximum. They're pretty small. And these guys weigh, again, about a max of about one and a half to two pounds. They're very small little delicate monkeys. They're really cute. There is a super muscular one though, we right? We do. His name is Ozu Motley and he's on the other side. So I'm going to let my fruit enrichment melt a little bit over here before I go put that on that side for them. But uh, Ozu Motley, he kind of looks like the Hulk version of a squirrel <laughs> monkey. I've never seen one that beefy. And that's just how he is. He's big and muscular. We don't know why. <laughs> it's not like we see him pumping iron throughout the day. He's just big and muscular. Um, you, see that, you see that room back there, like the area that you can't like little building area? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's his weight room. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. goes inside and works on the weights every day. Yeah. <laughs> no. um, he does do lots of climbing, but again, so do they all. So we don't really know why he's so much bulkier than their others. But um, he's also not the, the dominant animal in that group, which is really weird. He's, he's not the big boss, which is kind of funny. Um, they are social animals, so you're going to find them in groups. In South America, you can find groups of squirrel monkeys up to 300 animals, right? Can you imagine 300 squirrel monkeys at once? <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I take care of six. I can't imagine 300 because um, wow. six of them are messy. Uh, 300 would be messy and really, really, really loud. <laughs> um, but they're really cool little critters. They're lots of fun. Um, they've got some really neat adaptations. You can see that their head is dark and then their body is kind of a mottled olivey green color. That's a form of camouflage for them. So that helps them to blend in with the treetops in the forest environment. Um, why do you guys think they would need to blend in? Any ideas? To protect themselves from predators? Yeah, you think the same thing? Protect themselves from predators? What do you think would prey on a squirrel monkey? A jaguar? Mm, maybe, but that's not a very big bite for a jaguar. That's a lot of effort mm. for a really small snack. Let's see. Um, ooh, vultures? Yep, yeah, birds of prey. Snakes are another one. Mm -hmm. So other animals that... Ooh. Sometimes an ocelot, very good. Oh, ocelots are my favorite kitty. I love ocelots. Um, so these guys are preyed upon by a, quite a few different predators and they have to look out for danger kind of on all sides because ocelots and snakes can be found in the trees where they live, birds can fly overhead, um, and they've all got different jobs when they're in a big group because they watch out for predators and if one notices a predator, they're going to let the entire rest of their group know. Um, but also if they find food, they're going to let the entire rest of their group know. They're very communicative. Uh, they are very vocal, so they make a lot of noise, which is really fun, but these guys can be very loud. They make squeaks and shrieks and 
don't even know how to describe some of their calls. They're really high pitched. Yes. Do, do, like, what would they eat if they were actually in the wild? In the wild, they'd eat all sorts of stuff. So they are omnivores. They would eat fruits and vegetables. They would eat leaves. If they can find edible flowers, they might eat those. Uh, but they also eat things like meat. So if they can find lizards or eggs or even small birds, they'll eat those too. These guys get uh, birds, so chicks, for enrichment every once in a while. They really seem to like that. And they really like it when we offer them like little lizards or knolls. If we can get those in from our nutrition center, we can give it to them as a food item and they'll eat it. So you wouldn't think of them as being meat eaters, but they can be for sure. So they eat a little bit of everything depending on what's available to them. So they're very, very adaptable, which is cool. Any other questions? Kind of a fun thing with these guys is when we are working with them, we will try to bring them inside in the mornings. Luckily, these are really awesome small monkeys and they leave us alone. So we can actually walk in the exhibit with them and work with having them around. Um, some of our animals that are a little bit bigger, we can't really do that with, and that's for safety. But these guys will stay out of our way. We'll come in and we'll clean them up in the morning. We'll put out some food for them and we always put out enrichment. So throughout the day, we'll offer different things like the ice block or a toy something for them to feel or touch. So sometimes we'll bring in like bed sheets. Mm -hmm. That's a little different, which is kind of silly and fun. Do they ever try and climb on you? Not these guys, no. Um, I've seen some, the lemurs do it. The lemurs will do it, especially the, the baby lemurs, because they are not shy at all. Um, but these guys will pretty much leave you alone. If you think about it, we're really big and we could be very scary looking because they're a teeny tiny little monkey. Uh, even though they know we're not coming in to hurt them or anything like that, we're still pretty intimidating, so they typically leave us alone. Sometimes they'll come down, and I've had one try to steal my sunglasses before, or pull my hair. Mm -hmm. um, it just kind of depends on how bold they're feeling that day. But usually they leave you alone. Um, they know that we'll bring in special treats for them, so we'll offer them bugs, and they'll take things from your hand. Um, but it's nice when we can go in and clean without being poked and prodded at by a monkey. We also have two other species that share this exhibit. We have, I don't know if you can see her right now, but we have a nine-banded armadillo right behind this log right here. Her name is Hermione, and then we have another one in here that's a male. His name is Mick Jagger. Um, we call him MJ. Typically, armadillos are nocturnal, so it's kind of funny to see her out in the middle of the day. Uh, right now, I'm looking at her and watching her behavior. She smells the mealworm ice block that I put out. So I may go inside and move it for her to go see it since the monkeys aren't coming to interact with it. But um, they're really cool. They are burrowers. So if you look throughout our habitat, you'll notice we've got some tunnels in there and then they have dug out their own tunnels as well. There is a whole tunnel system throughout this side of the habitat. So they come in, they dig, and that's where they spend a lot of their time is down in those tunnels. They are insectivores, which means they eat mostly insects. A little bit of fruit and vegetables every once in a while, but the majority of their diet is insects. And here at the zoo, they get an insectivore pellet, which they really seem to like, as well as other types of bugs. Does that ice have worms in it? It does! It has worms in it, because the worms are one of the squirrel monkey's favorite treats. So actually, if we walk around the corner real quick, you'll see the squirrel monkeys are playing with the other ice pop that I put out for them. So if you want to walk around here on the other side of that fence, yeah. bugs or anything like that but they don't really like to get wet so they don't take a bath like you or I would take a bath. Every once in a while they'll splash themselves and then the males do something kind of icky. They actually will urinate on their hands and they'll wash themselves in their urine. Makes them really really stinky but what that does is it helps them to show their dominance as well. Why are they called squirrels? That's a great question. So they're about the size of a squirrel. If you look at them their body size their weight um, sometimes their tails can be a little bit fluffier as well. Mm. I've seen some squirrels over there, you yeah, know? we've got lots of wild squirrels <laughs> here at the zoo. 
they kind of freeload and you see a lot of our food. Uh, you can see the armadillo right now. He's reminding you right here at the bottom of the, the bush. Yeah. Hello, little lady. So we actually have those guys here in Texas, which is kind of fun. Nine-banded armadillos are the Texas state mammal. And these guys are really cool because to avoid predators, this particular type of armadillo cannot roll up into a ball. But what they do is they let a predator get really close and then they jump up and they smack the predator in the face. <laughs> yeah. Wow. They really do. So they, I've learned when I'm working with these guys and if I have to catch them for any particular reason, I don't stand directly over them to bend down and pick them up. You have to like sneak up on them from behind and like scoop them because they will jump up and hit you in the face. Um, but luckily we don't have to catch them very often. They're really good catch animals. Them, like, in the front. If they see you coming, they, a lot of times they'll run away. So they're considered a prey species and they tend to be a little bit more skittish and afraid. But if I ever had to take them up to the veterinarian for a checkup or anything like that, a lot of times we will try to encourage them and scoop them into a kennel. Uh, but if we have to catch them, we will just bend over and pick them up real gently and we'll scoop them up from the bottom. Why'd you choose to put the armadillos and the squirrel monkeys together? <laughs> Because the armadillos used to live in a different habitat, but they actually would dig tunnels and dig their way out. So this is an exhibit that they haven't managed to dig their way out of yet. Lucky for us. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, they're lots of fun. What about the tamandua? Is the tamandua there? Or? So she's probably inside. We have two tamanduas right now. They are living separately. So one's on this side, one's on the other side. We have a male and a female, and they are a breeding pair. So when it comes to breeding season, we'll actually put them in the same habitat and let them do their thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then about six months later, we'll get a baby tamandua. So these guys have actually been very, very successful with their breeding behaviors. We've had um, see, four tamandua babies four tamandua babies born here and they have since gone other gone to other facilities to hopefully start their own families which is really awesome. Hermione you're being so funny. Um, but Tammy and Lucho are their names and they're probably inside so our tamanduas are very spoiled and they really seem to like the air conditioning. They will literally go inside and sit and fall asleep in front of where we have the fans blowing so I can go inside and try to encourage her to come out but let's see. Mm -hmm. But this is now melted enough. I'm going to go around and offer this to the other squirrel monkey groups. So if you guys want to walk around over there to the other side, I'm going to put this out and then I'll be right back out to chat about that side, okay? Sure. All right. I'll see you guys over there. See you over there. Pretty interesting animals, everybody. I think we're going to go to the other to side now, so no? taking y'all on a little trip. See y'all in a bit. <laughs> 